Behind me, you'll see this old rototiller. I've mentioned it a few times now. I bought it at an auction. It was missing some major parts. I was able to find those parts. And now I'm going to start working on this motor to see if I can't get this old rototiller back together. There's history behind this and if you follow along in my video I'll be sharing that history as I go along and showing you what I'm going to do to get this old machine back running. This is a quick rototiller. Quick was bought out in um, 1966 by the Toro company and there's a quite a history behind this early company and we're gonna dig right into it. I want you to take a look at this motor and it was missing all of this. Now yes I could get a new motor and just slap on here and throw the belts on and work but I want to save the integrity of the Quick Manufacturing Incorporated company with this old rototiller. I zoom in here and I want to show you first of all this crankshaft right here. It's got a big notch out of it so I have to replace the crankshaft. The cover for the points and all this was missing and the shroud, the nut and the shroud and the recoil starter was missing. But I think I was able to find those parts on another used motor that a friend of mine had. And let's go over there and I'll show you the parts that I have. The first and main part was the crankshaft. Now it had to be the bigger shaft, it had to be the right length, and if <clears throat> And if I'm lucky, this gearing will all match the secondary crankshaft that comes that's attached to the camshaft in this other motor. But this is the, the crankshaft, and I was able to get it. It is in perfect shape. I disassembled another motor to get this. Another part was the flywheel, and it came off of that same motor that I pulled the crankshaft out of, so I know that this is going to work perfectly. Along with the uh, shroud, the recoil starter shroud, and uh, uh, the flywheel cover, and also the nut that goes with it, I have the cover for the points, just needs cleaned up, and then also this, and the bolts that are associated with it. Those are the extra parts that I've accumulated that I believe will put that motor back together that's on there. I could be wrong, but we're going to find out here momentarily. I could leave this motor set right on here, but I'm not going to because I want to get easy access to this crankshaft right here. So there's a bolt here, this one's missing, and there's two more on the other side and I should be able to lift this motor right off. You may be wondering as how do I even know this is the original motor to that um, rototiller? Well this motor someone had painted black and I took a little stripper and was able to get it off. And it's white, and if you look at the underneath side of this, see how white that is? Now I want to show you something. You notice this right here. That is white paint. It's original white paint that has transferred from that motor to this and that's a clear indication that this is the original motor. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these pulleys and I had to loosen this to get the belt off so I'm going to go ahead and take these bolts out right here 
We're going to use the ratchet drill and that runs right off and it drops right out of there. Now before I even clean or do, try to get this cover off after this is off, I want to clean both of these shafts as well as I possibly can. So the next step is to get this off. So let's see if I can't get that done. Okay, there's an Allen set screwed down in the groove of this pulley. And I think I have the right size Allen wrench. Let's see if that will break loose. Oh, it's a little tight. I was able to get the set screw out, loosened up, and the pulley's on there pretty tight, so I've got a gear puller on there, and let's see if this actually will bring it off of there. Yeah, it's moving. Okay. That is going to work, so let me get it off of there. So far, so good. I was able to run that pulley right off, had a little heat on it, pulled it right off the shaft. Now this shaft is a little hot, so I'm not going to put a lot of uh, uh, pressure on it with my hands. I'm going to get something and clean these two shafts here. I need to drain the oil out if there is any, and then we can work on getting that crank out of there. Want to make sure this doesn't fall out of place too, and then we don't have to worry about timing. Let me get this all cleaned up here. The main reason for wanting to clean this up is simply these seals that are in there, I want to save them. Now I did notice something about this shaft. It, it's it's, it's um, milled down and the sill actually rides on this and I can't get anything in there to clean that. And I believe the oil that's in here will stay in the case until I get this off. So let's run these off, uh, these bolts here, off right here and take this cover off. These bolts are 7 16 And the bottom four are all the same length. The top two are different lengths. Now what I'll do here is tap this just a little bit. There's two pins, one here and one here, that holds that in place. But, yep, there we go. Now I want to make sure that this doesn't come out of there, if that's possible. It's staying in place. I want to get a punch, though. The Oh wait, I'll tell you what, that bolt that held this in would work just fine for that. Let me put that in there and hit a little bit on that as I'm prying. Oh, just about. I have this off. The oil in there is extremely dirty. I dumped it in the wastebasket here on the floor. And there's just a little bit more in there. Okay. Now, I've got these two. There's two timing marks on, on here. They're hard to see. That's about as close as I'm going to get it, but there's a line here and a dot there. So this can come out and I just need to put those timing marks back out. And when I drop those out, the lifters popped right out of there. The gasket is intact. Now I got to get inside here to take the cap off the crankshaft. 
so I can drop this out of here. I'll probably have to take the head off too to get it high enough. So let's do that next. You can see that the head bolts are coming right out. If you ever do this, make sure you wear gloves so this doesn't spin around and catch your hands. Let's keep going here. Now I'm going to lift the head off and leave the bolts right where they are so I don't lose track of them. And then if I have to take them out, I will. Um, to clean them up somewhat. Because I'm sure this head's going to need a little cleaning. Let me tap it just a little. Yep, it's loose. That should come off of there. I thought it would. Nope, this one's still holding some. Okay, I'm going to set this off to the side. Might as well take the air breather off while I'm here, if I can. Yep, spinning right off of there. So I got to pull the carburetor and clean it. And boy, that breather is just like powder. It's falling out of there. We'll take the spark plug off. And we'll lean this back over here to expose these cap nuts right in there. I've got to get a tool to unfold the piece of metal they have in there to hold that from working its way off. And I think if I just do this right here. Yep, came right down where I needed it, and it came loose. <sighs> nope, maybe. Yep, there she came loose. You got to remember the torque on these two. If you want to put it together correctly, you need torque. There's the cap. There's only one way that can go on. The oil splasher's on the bottom, so we'll put it in there just like it came apart. And now, let's see if the crank will come out of there. I think it will. And see, it's a tapered crank, so we're okay on the... Oops. Let's get that piston out of the way first. I... There's the crank. Now let's check it against the other one I have. I'm going to do a little, a few little bitty measurements here. On, on this. Let's measure this right here. That is really close. Let's check this. Boy, that is right there. Okay, let's check the last one. That's 75. I think we're good on measurements. I put the crank in and it fit perfectly, spins very nicely. I was able to get the piston back down into place. And now I want to get the, uh, the crank on to the piston if I can. Oh boy, maybe. Um, the, the, not the crank, but the rod. 
There we go. Maybe that'll let me go now. It's so close. Oh, I see. The piston is turned just a little bit, so I have to reach in there and get that straightened out. So there we go. Now we're talking. There we go. So the cap, get it back on there. Thought I better bring it back in. I got the uh, rod cap on. I shoved the the lifters in and I have the dot and the line lined up perfectly. Now I'm ready to close this back up. You may be wondering why in the heck didn't I do some cleaning on this before I close this all back up? Well, there's a reason for that. I want to make darn sure that we are going to work before I go to the trouble of cleaning everything up. And that's why I didn't. Uh, and my plan is to tear this all back apart if I have to, at least as much as I have to, to get everything cleaned up. But I wanted to get this back together. We'll put these bolts back in. And we're going to see if we can't get some spark out of this baby. If we can't. I'm not a hundred percent sure what's uh, what the next step will be. It's still in there. It's not very good shape, but it's good enough shape to to see if it runs. We'll probably end up having to replace that head gasket. When I was a kid, I put a ton of these together. Just like you're seeing now, I didn't know rhyme for a reason on anything. So I just put together and obviously it probably needed uh, all kind of specs, torques, what have you. But I didn't have it. So I just made do with what I did have. And Believe it or not, these motors ran after I got done with them. I know there's a, a, a crisscross pattern and a particular torque you want to do these in, but be careful when you hold this with your fingers. Fact is, let me get a pliers to hold that. You watch, you watch stuff that I do and uh, you try it at home and get hurt, man, that'd make you feel bad. Okay. Oh, I see I forgot one here. Missed one completely. We'll do him first then. He's should add a little oil on these, that's for sure. Okay, perfect. Now let's look at the ignition side of this. Oops, I bent the governor. This is the governor. And I want to get under here and sand these right here and loosen these up. I'm going to put just a little bit. It's this right here and this right here. <clears throat> And I'll get a nut driver and loosen that just a hair. And I have to get a bolt for right here because this bolt won't hold it for some reason. It's that size right there and it's just a hair too short. So I'm going to see if I can find one. Recap. T taking this off, sand at the bottoms. I sand it to points. 
and got this all put back together everything looks good there we can put this on here just to see if it turns I guess I never tried it since I put it back together I guess I better oh yeah there it goes finally it turns good put the head on torqued it trying to see if I can't get everything up here set up for ignition okay we have this little clip here it's a hold down clip I found a little longer bolt when I was a kid the way I used to adjust the points was just put a little piece of cardboard in between the, in between it and you know what it's amazing how that worked it worked just fine okay right there the points are wide open that's a little bit too much of a gap I got the point set I have this set and I just got the flywheel shoved on there and I want to show you something if you can see this I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got a really, really good spark. That's what we wanted. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop the flywheel back off. I just have it loosely on there. And the reason for that, I want to cover this back up with, with this. So we'll run these out. Okay, now we can see how that is magnetized. It's got good magnet to it. Let's put the flywheel back on. And double check it one more time. Yep, there she is. Um, the nut that goes on here would be this right here. The way you tighten that is you just bump that ever so softly. And you put your screw in before you bump it. And the reason you do that is you don't want to smash the threads down. And with the screw in there, you know, very, very likely not going to happen as quickly. And then I'll need to fasten this to this bench. And I've got a plan for that where it won't take a lot of time. This mesh right here fits right on there. Does it go like that? I'm excited to see if this old thing will run. I think it will. Briggs old Briggs and scrap them someone calls them, but I always had good luck with them. I mean for what I used it for. Maybe they aren't that good of a motor. Okay, what I'm going to do is bolt this down to my table. As I was bolting my engine down to the table here, I uh, noticed this right here. That's the, uh, the washer that goes on the flywheel in between that uh, thing I just screwed into there. Um, tell you what, I'm going to take that back off and put this washer in there before I try starting it. I went ahead and put that on. That uh, washer in there didn't take long. I realized I had this screen on backwards, so I, I took care of that and I 
put this recoil starter on. I need to get a wrench and tighten this spark plug, but listen to this. That sounds like it's going to fire. Let me get this plug tightened up just a little bit. I'm going to try to pour some oil in here. I have some uh, 1030. It probably should use something else, but this is what I have on the shelf. We'll pour, probably make a mess here, won't I? You want it just so it's starting to run out. And that's what it's doing there. Okay, when I have an engine like this that hasn't been started for a while, I use two cycle gas. And the reason I do that is because that cylinder in there is dry. So I'm going to pour a little of this two cycle gas in the carburetor. We have us a runner. That thing hasn't ran in years. I can't tell you when the last time it ran. Um, wow. And it seemed to run pretty decent too. Let's see if there's any old gas in here. Oh yeah, there's gas in there. And the tank's a bit rusty. Um, I wonder if I could actually get it to run on its own. I doubt it. And these screw jet screws are tight. Wow. Let's put just a little bit more in there, but not as much this time. Let's see if we can't get that to run again. Well, I guess that's all she's going to do without working on the carburetor. So let's get started right on that. Change of plans. I'm going to call this portion of this video complete. I've got all those parts changed. She runs, you heard it. And to keep these videos a little shorter, I don't want to get uh, get too long on it. So we're going to have this as part one, and we're going to do part two where I clean up all these parts, the carburetor and that, and we'll see what kind of time we get into it. And we may even do part three. For now, this one's complete. I'd love to hear what you have to say about your engine projects, how you go about it. What I've shown you here today is exactly how I did it when I was a kid. Uh, no rhyme or reason. Took two engines, made one good one, and no torquing, no nothing. Poured a little gas in the carburetor and it, it took right off after a few pulls. You heard it. You heard it, and it ran. Back when I was a kid, I probably reused the old oil, too. I'd love to hear your comments. If you like my videos and the way I go about doing things, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. If you like videos like this, I encourage you to watch this right here because these videos are what I'm about and you can see that video right here. Can it be fixed? Sure it can. 
Can you fix it? Your doggone right you can fix it. Just try.